Hi, and welcome to part three of lecture 13. Now, the last part of my lecture was pretty long. I think it was about 13 minutes for the video. This one will be a lot shorter. This is the only thing that I'm going to talk about in this short little segment, which is the invertible matrix theorem. Now, this theorem here says that if I have a square matrix, and it's n by n, then the following are equivalent. So you'll see statements like this in math all the time. And when you see something saying the following equivalent, is that if you know one of the statements is true, they're all true. And if one of the statements is false, then they're all false. So the way to think about this is somebody hands you a square matrix, and you want to know whether your matrix is invertible. Well, you could find the inverse, or you could look at one of the corresponding statements here. And if it's one of these statements is true about the matrix you've been given, then your matrix is invertible. If one of the statements is not true for your matrix, then your matrix is not invertible. Okay. So let's quickly run down through this list, and a lot of them should seem familiar to you from things that we've seen so far in the course, but we're just tying them all together into this one giant theorem. So A and B is saying that A is an invertible matrix if if A is row equivalent to the identity, or if A is row equivalent to the identity, then A is the is an invertible matrix. Now, hopefully that seems familiar because we just proved this, right? We we just proved that both of these statements mean the same thing. But what else can we get? Well, being an invertible means also that you have to have n pivot positions. You can see that from the identity matrix, if it's row equivalent to the identity matrix. The equation ax equals zero has only the trivial solution. And that's because if you have pivots in each uh, uh, row and column, because it's a square matrix, and when you look at this system, you can only have, you have no free variables. Okay. And for each of these statements, you could come up with an argument. So I won't go explain why each statement is true. You could look in the book. But let's, what you really want to know is like what are these statements that guarantee a matrix to be invertible or non-invertible? So the next one is the columns of A form an independent set. If you're looking from the point of view of linear transformations, your matrix is invertible if the uh, linear transformation is one-to-one. -one. The equation Ax equals B has at least one solution for all B and Rn. And let me just remark that we actually saw this last class. We proved part of this last class. The columns of A have to span all of Rn. The linear transformation, not only is it one to one, it's also on to Rn. Then J and K are saying that there's a matrix C that you can multiply on the left to give you to the identity. And there's a matrix D such that when you multiply on the right gives you the identity. So we're gonna make this a little bit clearer in a, in a couple minutes. And the last statement is saying that if A is invertible, then it's transpose is invertible. And we actually saw that earlier we, in yesterday's uh, lecture when we looked at properties of the inverse. And similarly, if this guy, matrix is invertible, so it, so is the original matrix. So that's the invertible matrix theorem. The amazing thing is, as we go on in this course, we're going to be adding more and more and more statements here. So I think it goes up to P, uh, MN or P. I can't remember exactly how many. So there's a lot of different ways of saying that a matrix is invertible. So that's all I wanted to say now. I'll see you in the next lecture.